everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Blue Jeans Product Vision and Direction, Elevating Events and Modernizing Meetings. My name is Maggie Bliss, and I will be your moderator this morning. Today, I am joined by Peter Verwain, our VP of Product Management, and Zach Bozen, the VP of Product Marketing and Communications. So before we kick things off, there's a couple housekeeping items I'd like to go over. For today's webinar, we are using Blue Jeans events, so you are in the attendee viewing experience, and it's a one-way viewing experience. But if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see the navigation bar, and the third icon down is going to be the moderator chat feature. So if you have any technical issues or want to speak with me at all, please put it in there. And then the last icon is going to be our Q&A chat feature, so if you have any questions for Zach and Peter today about our new features or anything about Blue Jeans, please post them there, and we will address them at the end of the presentation. And lastly, this will be recorded and we will send it to you out afterwards. And if we don't get to all of your questions, we will send the answers to those questions along with the recording. And with that, I'll pass it over to Zach and Peter. Cool. Thanks so much, Maggie. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. We're excited to share some really awesome new features that we've got on the roadmap uh, for both Blue Jeans meetings and events. Um, but before I hand it over to Peter to dive into some of those details, I know that we have some newer customers or maybe some folks who aren't quite Blue Jeans customers yet. And so I want to do a quick overview of the difference between uh, our two core flagship solutions, uh, Blue, Je Blue Jeans meetings and Blue Jeans events. Um, so kind of one simple way to think about the difference between these two solutions is that BlueJeans Meetings is really your standard video conferencing solution for your everyday meetings, your one-on-ones, your stand-ups. You know, sales calls typically happen over the browser using our WebRTC. Uh, so, you know, thinking about the number of overall participants, you know, typically smaller team meetings, but can go all the way up to 150 participants. Over on the BlueJeans event side, this is really for those large-scale interactive virtual events. Um, we can scale all the way up to 50,000 participants. So this is really designed more for those large internal meetings, those town halls and those all hands, or for today, for example, we're using it for a webinar, uh, as well as larger virtual conferences. And, and Peter will dive into some more of the details that we're seeing around virtual events going forward. But when you think about some of the different features and capabilities that we offer across these two different products, you know, for meetings, we really think about three core buckets, simple, smart, and trusted. You know, one of the things that customers love about BlueJeans is how modern the design is, how intuitive, how we just have a small number of buttons that are presented and then disappear, and it's really simple to control. The first time you join a meeting, you really know what to do, and you're not confused by an overwhelming number of features. Uh, we have a wide variety of intelligent features baked into BlueJeans meetings. So whether it's our integration with Dolby Voice that has really advanced noise suppression or our smart meeting feature set that really enhances productivity, uh, you can ensure that your meetings are going to be better off when they're on BlueJeans. And then trusted, you know, security and privacy, these are things that have been core to BlueJeans ever since the company was launched. And our standards-based approach has kept our customers secure over the past 10 years. We enhance that with rich analytics, uh, with Command Center and our management console that really help uh, enterprise and IT administrators understand what's going on across the BlueJeans environment. On the event side, quickly, uh, there's kind of three similar buckets, engaging, scalable, and manageable. The key thing about a virtual event is that it shouldn't just be a one-way dialogue. You should really try to engage with the audience, and that's why Maggie just asked everyone to submit questions to uh, participate in the chat experience, because we know that dialogue helps us to actually stay connected, and that's critical with BlueJeans events. It's scalable. As I mentioned, we go up to 50,000 participants. Uh, we also scale using streaming platforms, and we have the ability to embed on a web page. And manageability, which is really what I think is maybe the core differentiator for BlueJeans events, is we arm moderators with a really critical dashboard of controls to take their events up to production grade. And it's those controls that allow them to control the layout, control who's speaking, control the presentation, uh, and really helps to elevate the experience. Now, to give everyone some perspective on the usage that we've seen over the past few months, and kind of each time we've done one of these webinars, we've provided a snapshot, so I wanted to continue doing that here, is highlight on the left uh, the experience that we've had with meetings in terms of number of meetings hosted, as well as the number of attendees to BlueJeans meetings. And what you'll see is that we were pretty consistent um, over the pre-COVID period, hosting around 15,000 attendees to meetings per month and right around 4 million meetings. Well, in February and March, we really started to see this acceleration as organizations sent employees home and everyone started working from home. And we really topped out in April when I think video conferencing for many folks was still kind of novel. Um, and since then, we've kind of slid down into more of a steady state of what we're seeing kind of in the current period. 
So overall, where we've landed on the monthly basis is we have about 45 million attendees per month attending Blue Jeans meetings and right around 12 million, 11, 12 million meetings hosted per month. So that's about three times more meetings than we had on the Blue Jeans platform pre-COVID and about four times as many attendees. And this is really powerful because it gives us really kind of rapid exposure to what features our customers want. We have so many more people now using the platform. We're able to understand those demands uh, at a much greater level. And where we're, Peter's going to focus is really around some of the enhancements we're making to user experience, as well as some of the additional developments we've had around uh, our security toolkit. Over on the right side, I gave you a little thumbnail on the top right just to see the same type of chart in terms of the number of events. You know, really started to scale up in February and March, and we've kind of hit a new steady state for number of events that we're hosting. And we're having about five and a half times as many events in, in the current period than we had pre-COVID. And what I've outlined here is from the number of attendees and how that spiked and whether it's you know an event between one and 50 people or all the way up to 3000 plus, we're just seeing tremendous tremendous growth uh, with, with the Blue Jeans event solution. And what I find really interesting is on the, on the higher end, right? For 3000 plus attendees, we hosted four of those in October of 2019. We actually bumped that up to 41 uh, in April. So we're seeing just a tremendous amount of utilization on events. We're seeing it both at kind of the mid size event level as well as the massive size level. And I think one of the things that's been interesting for us is where Blue Jeans events historically has played really well with those internal all hands meetings. Now we're seeing many of our customers interested in hosting virtual conferences and marketing webinars. Uh, and so a lot of the feature set that Peter's gonna dive into is really about extending our streaming capabilities and improving the experience uh, for those more external use cases. So it's been super powerful to have all this great feedback. And we're excited to share with all the things we've been working on. Peter, I'll hand it over to you. All right, thanks, Zach. So uh, first today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on uh, Blue Jeans meetings and uh, some of the recent and upcoming enhancements as it pertains to uh, the user experience and security, right? So, uh, so first, really, I mean, as, as Zach mentioned, we, we saw a major spike in usage, major spike in support calls, tons of new first time users uh, being exposed to the BlueJeans platform and really giving us gold for feedback. And so uh, a lot of the capabilities that uh, were requested or just challenges we saw people uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> going through experiencing uh, meetings for their first time uh, allowed us to really enhance the product from a usability perspective and integrate self-help, uh, you know, tools within the product to to, to solve the most common problems. Uh, and then in addition to that, we delivered a lot of enhancements on our breakout sessions, which have uh, I believe started uh, increasing in usage of up to 10, 15 percent or 15 x. Uh, so the, the use cases that apply to breakout sessions have, have expanded greatly. Chat as well. More and more people are using chat within meetings instead of their standalone messenger clients. And so adding the capabilities that end users expect, uh, it's uh, quite critical there, right? So a lot of great things that have happened uh, across the board in terms of uh, quality of experience and uh, overall features that uh, our customers have requested. And uh, when it comes to feature requests and customers that, uh, and what customers are asking us about, uh, really I would have to say uh, the background blurring capability uh, is is probably one of the more popular items. And, and we're pretty pretty happy to say that it's it's here. We're actually uh, in an early preview now, and uh, it's actually going to be uh, GA next week, right? So. Uh, everybody that uh, wants to have that secure background, blurred virtual background, uh, that's that's going to be available to you. And then coming later at the actual end of the month, uh, you will actually have uh, the ability as an admin to control which backgrounds are there for your end users, even uh, sort of control add a single, you know, blue like a branded uh, background for your end users to sort of if you're if you're worried about. Un, unprofessional backgrounds in, in your organization, you can sort of, uh, you can take care of that, right, at an, at an admin level. So pretty excited that that's gonna be coming. Next, when it comes to the overall user experience with BlueJeans, uh, really what we, we wanted to talk about today is a, a new uh, architecture that we're actually adding to our platform, right? So we're gonna get into the weeds on technology here just for a second, bear with me. Uh, but essentially what we've, we've had, BlueJeans, has always really operated on a transcoding 
type architecture, right? Where, where end users are joining meetings and uh, their video stream is sent out to the cloud. And our cloud does all the work of putting the video tiles together and we send you a single stream with all the video tiles. And it's great because this is what enables our, our interoperability strength with, with supporting all the different devices and more, you know, SIP 323 rooms uh, than anyone out there. And, and so really that's that strength that we have. But now we're actually introducing a, uh, what we call an SFU, a signal forwarding unit. This is a, a switching architecture that allows our, our BlueJeans clients to actually leverage a, a newer way of, of transmitting and receiving video, uh, which we call a multi-stream type approach, where multiple streams are coming in for each participant that you're in a meeting with, you're gonna get a video stream from them, and that enables us to do quite a few things in terms of features, meeting capacity, uh, it improves video quality from a, uh, an overall clarity perspective, and just, just great things that come with the UI, right? And so the, the key thing that I wanna really reiterate is that BlueJeans, we have both. We have an MCU and an SFU that are intelligently working together that gets us the full compatibility as well as the optimized experience, right? And nobody else really has this type of architecture. And this is why you're gonna see us start to leapfrog and move faster and innovate and do things that other people can't do uh, because their architecture limits them. So next, when I talked about the sequin architecture, this is the exact feature that a sequin type architecture uh, gives us, right? With individual streams coming to you uh, instead of one big stream that has to be, you know, composited in the cloud. Now we can do this. We can add the five, the, the five by five layout. We can even take it further, uh, combining our MCU and SFU technology. We can even make this, uh, if we want to, a thousand people on the screen, right? So uh, that's that's kind of the direction we're going, and we want to make sure that the uh, experience that we do offer when we do that is immersive, usable, and actually really fits for the use cases that people are asking us about, right? Uh, so Sequin is really gonna give us this uh, in August, which you'll start seeing, and uh, we're gonna take it even further, right? And so the next big thing to talk about really when it comes to Sequin and how the video layouts will be represented is mobile. Uh, so on iOS, we currently have, for those that are migrating onto the Sequin platform uh, as we speak, those folks will have access to this new interface on iOS, which does a better job of representing the video tiles and taking uh, advantage of the real estate, uh, and, but also better clarity, crisper video, uh, and actually we've, we've uh, adds, added some general bandwidth management improvements that just make the connection uh, more reliable in general. So a lot of great things coming with this new component to our platform that we're adding. Uh, we're really excited for you all to try it. Uh, this is available on iOS now and uh, at the end of the month on Android. So uh, this is, you know, in general, when it comes to Sequin and uh, this new platform, all that stuff I just was talking about, uh, if you are a customer that purchased online, uh, you have Sequin now. You've been using it for a while since September, or uh, I'm sorry, since uh, February. And so you basically now, or you've been using it, uh, but for a lot of our customers that we manage more closely with the uh, customer success and, and so forth, uh, the enterprise customers as we'd call it, uh, just reach out to your account manager uh, to say, hey, I wanna be a part of the Sequin beta and we can turn you on or a set of your users that you specify and uh, you can begin trying it. And then when uh, the 25 participant layout comes available and you know, the, the, the later this month and early August, it'll just be available for you and you'll, you'll have that new feature. So next, we're gonna talk about some of the security features that we're rolling out, right? And so pretty excited to be rolling out a very differentiated feature that we call uh, restricted meetings. We've been working on this feature for quite some time uh, in order to make sure that we can lock down a meeting that supports tons of different devices, clients, room types, and so forth, and really make sure it's a secure experience. And that when you send an invite to somebody uh, that you need to attend your meeting, whether they're inside or outside your organization, you'll have full confidence that it is that person attending. 
right? And the way it works is we basically send uh, for internal participants that join your meeting, uh, they will just log in through SAML or your, your identity provider, or even just log into their BlueJeans account, because it's assumed they have a BlueJeans account. Uh, but for those that are outside of your organization, uh, they don't have an email address under your domain or anything like that, you would send them an invite. When it's time for them to join, they'll simply go through an email verification flow really quickly. They'll receive an email that says, hey, this is your time bound join link, click join, and then you're finally in the meeting, right? And so we're looking for ways to uh, continue to enhance that, right? Exploring even options like facial recognition to, uh, to take it even further. Uh, and then over on the right, you see a lot of the, the, the key features that we're introducing or have introduced that really help you manage security within your meeting, right? So we've added the quick lock button, which essentially takes our lock meeting feature we have today and puts it right at the top. So you just click that button. If you have back-to-back -back meetings all day, you have a meeting running long and you don't want the next person to join your meeting and, and uh, listen to something that may be a sensitive conversation, uh, you click that lock and they'll basically be met at a waiting room, right, when the next person tries to join your meeting. And so the next thing that we're introducing is really giving you more granular control over who can share your screen. Where BlueJeans started out is we want everything to be easy, democratic in meetings, if somebody wants to share, just click share. You could override anybody. Well, we've added more control to that. So if you are in a meeting and just on the fly want to specify, hey, I'm going to share something, don't let anyone override my sharing. You can do that just temporarily. Or if you want to be a little more heavy handed, you can set the defaults at the enterprise level to never allow anyone to override screen sharing in a meeting. And that's that's your option. Uh, the other thing that we've introduced is the ability for you to control only or allow only moderators to share within a meeting. And again, this is something that can be set by default at your enterprise level, uh, or you can just choose to use that on the fly in your meeting. We, we support the full range of, of, of configuration. Uh, and then the enhanced waiting room, uh, which I mentioned earlier, when you lock your meeting, someone tries to join, you're at a waiting room, essentially, right? That uh, uh, we're enhancing that to give visibility to the moderator who's joining. We're also going to give a knock functionality for participants just to make sure that uh, we don't introduce any usability issues and impede uh, uh, people's abilities to have meetings uh, by you know, aggressive meeting lock situations. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to give you more granular control over the audio capabilities. We, we allow you to click a button to mute everyone on the meeting. We just don't yet allow you to specify hey, don't let anyone unmute. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, fix that. Now, closed captioning. Prior to COVID, by far the most requested feature uh, in, across the board. And the way we've introduced closed captioning is it's automatic. Uh, we use natural language processing to uh, generate the text. And uh, essentially, it's, it's available to any participant that wants to turn it on. So if your company has subscribed to the closed captioning feature, then now uh, that feature will light up for every meeting, for every participant even, right? The host doesn't have to turn it on or anything. Uh, a participant can join a meeting and if they want closed captioning, they can just choose it in the settings and turn it on. It's, it's that simple. Uh, so we're actually adding the, uh, the Android support very, very quickly on mobile. Uh, and then of course the uh, recording playback experience will include the closed captioning as well at the end of this month, and we're tracking forward on iOS and, 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 and pretty much checking off all the different endpoints and experiences we have at BlueJeans. But we do have this available right now on our desktop app. All right, so that brings us to BlueJeans events, where, as Zach said, really, we're focusing a lot on the new COVID use cases and the phenomenon where we're seeing uh, a ton more external events uh, taking place really to, you know, uh, augment for the, the lack of in-person events and, and, and other types of, uh, of marketing engagements. And so, uh, events are, are proving to be very useful for our customer base. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's, it's quickly become, uh, the center of the spotlight when it, in our roadmap planning. And so when we really look at events and what we want to do to enable it, uh, for better internal town halls and communication, as well as external uh, meetings and, and marketing awareness events, uh, we realize that we need to continue our 
our uh, user experience facelift that we added to meetings and apply it to events. And so uh, what we'll do is we will unify the design so that meetings and events essentially look the same. And now any, anybody who knows how to join a BlueJeans meeting and share their screen will be able to show up in as, as an event uh, participant and share their screen and present, right? We want it to be very, very easy, and we do not want you to be forced to have dry runs and practice sessions just to train people on how to use the product, right? And so that is something that we'll be targeting for this year right now. It's, it's, it's in the design process, and hopefully we'll have a, a date nailed down soon here. Now, really focusing on the demands of today where we saw a whole new group or persona of user uh, post-COVID starting to use uh, meetings and events technologies. And so quickly, the, the general knee-jerk reaction that we saw from our end users was, hey, this is just a meeting that you're streaming to everybody. Where's the experience? Where's the, the, the sizzle uh, that you would expect, the high production value that, that makes it feel uh, like an event? And so we're actually now going through the process of, of working through various experiences like uh, our weather person mode uh, or content sharing overlay that actually shows, uh, you know, the, the presentation in a more high production value uh, type way, right? And having the lower thirds capabilities uh, at the bottom where you can enter, you know, names on the fly from that robust dashboard, moderator dashboard that Zach mentioned earlier in, in the call, uh, basically that moderator is gonna be able to add lower third uh, content on the fly in an easy way. And the key thing here is that you don't have to be a broadcasting expert to do this. We wanna democratize the high production of value of events. And when it comes to events now, customers, they want a more customized experience, right? And BlueJeans, we've, we've addressed uh, customization and branding on two different fronts. One, we allow you to take your event and embed it into your page, into your brand, right? And so uh, today, if you go schedule an event and you actually, uh, you, you actually go and uh, choose, I want to embed it, you can take that and embed it into your actual uh, page. But we're taking that to another level, right? We allow you to do some things today where you can embed the event in your page and change some colors. Uh, but essentially the next vision is to create more of a, a, an embeddable attendee player, something more compartmentalized, something that fits the form factor of many sites like what you're actually seeing here uh, to provide just that different level of uh, a, you know streaming attendee experience, right? Now on the other side of things, we allow you to actually brand within the event experience, the emails, the landing pages, and so forth, and add your logo and your brand to the overall uh, experience. So we pretty much have events uh, and branding covered on all angles at this point, and we plan to even take it further. And then when it comes to uh, external events, what we're seeing is the norm is that events need to be where the people are, right? They need to be in the social networks. And uh, Blue Jeans, we were the first to do uh, streaming with uh, Facebook Live and uh, Workplace. So a lot of those streams out there you see when people are streaming, at least it, for the last few years, you know, they, in a talk show type fashion, that was Blue Jeans in, in most of those instances. Now you see almost uh, standalone point products that only do events uh, for streaming uh, to social media you know, uh, channels like YouTube, live, uh, LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, et cetera. So uh, we are in investing in this in a big way. We'll have this actually uh, in short order, probably starting with YouTube Live uh, and, and moving on from there. Now, the next step actually coming in the Q3 timeframe uh, is more of the inverse case, right? Say you're doing a, an, a, you know, a town hall and you are actually uh, wanting to stream uh, to your, all of your employees within the company, the new commercial, right? The, the, new, the new commercial for the company, uh, it's, it's sort of a motivator type thing, but you want it to be in the highest quality possible. Now, BlueJeans, we allow you to upload a video and 
stream it and share it to all your participants at that you know 720p 30 frames per second uh you know you know quality level uh but we have customers that they really want that next level quality right there it's oftentimes these companies are involved in uh you know movie production or they have a very very strong brand and they want the highest quality possible and so now we're allowing you to in the events product export click copy an rtmp url and go to your production you know your professional production studio environment it could be something high end or it could be something you know free like open broadcast solution obs right and you can paste your rtmp url hit stream and now everybody in the event is going to get uh, an unaltered direct stream right to them at 1080p 30 frames per second right giving you the highest quality possible bypassing all mixing and and etc so really it allows you to take this platform and extend it and get the absolute most out of it when it comes to streaming video and of course for these external marketing events uh, we've got a slew of integrations right and in terms of how uh, we allow you to uh, follow up uh, do real-time translation, um, all sorts of, you know, different, uh, you know, registration capabilities. We support Splash and, uh, you know, Salesforce and et cetera. Uh, so really we're going to continue to expand uh, these integrations. And if you have specific integrations that uh, we do not offer today with events, uh, please let us know. This is a, a key initiative for us to ensure that your marketing events are successful and you can, uh, communicate with all of your customers and follow up with them accordingly. And just to wrap up, some of the things, just want to mention some of the, the newer deliverables that uh, came out with the events product. Uh, you know, I'd mentioned earlier closed captioning for meetings and uh, it's there for events as well, right? And all your recorded events, you know, coming soon, just like I mentioned, recording for closed captioning will be supported, will be supported for events. And then, the other big thing that we've added uh, is uh, restricted events. So like I talked about with uh, meetings and being very sure that who you invite uh, is the person that is attending, we have uh, that similar capability with restricted events, which would allow you to have a meet or a large town hall and be very sure that only that one business unit you invited can attend. And we, we allow that granular control of invitees being authenticated into your identity provider and essentially being allowed access to the event. So uh, some great, great capabilities there if you're concerned with security and who has access to your event, uh, especially if you're doing a 50,000 person uh, event, you, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that you may want to do to ensure only the right people show up, right? Uh, and then the other thing to mention is we do have an attendee engagement index. It allows you to see who is, uh, is actually engaging with the event. We have it turned off by default, just given the climate and, and uh, people being afraid of big brother type scenarios. Uh, but this is a feature that if you let us know, we turn it on for you and how it will work is it will actually just, it will actually score the engagement of your event from zero to 100 based on the uh, overall interaction within the event. Not, not just, hey, people are browsing Facebook and on another window and watching something else. This does more, it actually, uh, counts how people are interacting with Q&A and a lot of the other features, right? So uh, some pretty great stuff coming uh, as well as already delivered. And with that, I think we are Q&A. Hi, Peter. Hi, Zach. Thank you guys for that awesome presentation. There's so many cool features that are coming out that I know I am personally very excited for since I use the events product almost daily. Um, so we have a quite an enormous amount of questions that have come through, which are fantastic. Um, we are going to try and get through as many of these as we can. If we cannot get to your question, do not worry. I will find an answer to it and I will follow up with you afterwards. Um, so those will go out in the follow-up email. So let us begin. Um, will it ever be possible to translate the closed captioning into another language? So at this time, uh, we, yes, it will eventually. We don't have a date for it, but it's a direction that we are going. 
Awesome. And then quite a few people have asked about um, taking role um, or attendance. Is there a way to rename dial-in callers or participants? And is there a quick way to get a list of everyone who's attended an event or a meeting? Yes. So essentially, we have uh, we have great analytics. There's multiple ways that you can get the the attendee list. Individual hosts can go into their you know history and see who attended events or meetings. Also, uh, command center. Right. We we haven't talked about the command center and the huge you know that that platform. Uh, gives you a ton of analytics as to who attended and, uh, you know, that's it. Um, so the other thing you asked about was renaming participants. So each participant can, you know, rename themselves and everything. In Command Center, uh, with our white glove capabilities, uh, you can have a moderator go in and rename somebody. We're going to add the capability for moderators to rename other participants and so forth and continue to add those. This is one of those nitty-gritty things that we need to uh, 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 to add. Good Perfect. And then someone asked, how will ver us blue jeans being a part of Verizon now um, change things for the blue jeans product? Sorry, the uh, how will the brand change? Yes, and or, how will the product change now that we're a part uh, of Verizon? Yeah, so uh, essentially we are blue jeans by Verizon. So I'm still wearing the blue colored shirt and everything. Uh, in terms of product, we, you know, we are a standalone organization within Verizon uh, that operates on, uh, you know, focusing on the collaboration technology, right? So we, everybody with the, uh, uh, pretty much with the company at acquisition is still here, account managers, support, uh, all of that is still uh, in place and will continue to be as, as far uh, as we see uh, in the future. And, you know, we're blue jeans, we're blue jeans, meetings, events, rooms. Uh, nothing will really change there other than the fact that we are going to have uh, a lot more awareness campaign budget, which we've been uh, quite modest in the past on, on marketing over the last year. And so that should change quite a bit, I would expect, uh, as well as some good integrations, right? We have uh, the Verizon network, which is extremely powerful. Uh, they have their uh, virtual network services that they offer. So you can expect to see some bundling uh, that goes on there that really sort of allows you to have, you know, high security meetings uh, with almost zero packet lost and, uh, you know, basically end-to-end -end QoS, you know, with their network services. So great things coming there, uh, as well as there's some other, you know, UCAS type products that uh, that Verizon offers that we you may see an integration come with uh, soon. So. Um. Um, and then someone asked, is there ever a plan to integrate meetings and events into one platform, or will we be keeping those separate? Absolutely. First step is just to make the UI in parity. Uh, the, the next step is, you know, we talked about Sequin, right, and, and the mass scale that, that will allow us to take meetings up to 500 by the end of the year and 1,000 beyond that. Uh, and then essentially, once we have that scale on our meetings platform, we'll pull over the uh, polling feature, uh, Q&A feature into meetings. They will be in parity. And at that time, uh, we'll be ready to make a switch. So I would expect that to be more so, uh, you know, early part of, of, of next year. Perfect. And then will the enhanced security limit connections, um, limit the connections from H323 bridges like poly R and X? Um, no, no, essentially not. There's a, a, a sort of a dance you have to go through, but uh, essentially those endpoints are, are, are supported. Perfect. And then when it comes to the meetings product, um, will there be a way to rotate through more than the nine videos or the five by five that's coming? So we're going to start out with the 25 participants and the active speakers, the most recent active speakers are going to be the ones that show up. And then, like I was saying, that combination we have of a, a switching and mixing and transcoding, we're going to leverage that to take it to the next level, uh, likely going to integrate some type of scrolling capability to take it beyond 25, of course. Uh, and uh, But we're, we plan to really, in the true blue jeans fashion, uh, we, we really want to work with our customers, watch how they use the product, and really understand the need behind the scrolling and uh, develop the right solution that's uh, innovative. Perfect. Um, and then going into breakout rooms, what is the number, maximum number of breakout rooms for meetings and how many participants per breakout room? 
Uh, I believe off the top of my head, and I apologize, I'm, uh, I, have a, I have a product manager that uh, designed this at, the, at a granular level, uh, but I believe it's the 20 is a max right now, and we're going to expand that in terms of total rooms. Uh, in terms of overall attendees numbers per room, I, you know, it's, I believe it's just, it's, it's gated by the total number of participants in a meeting. Right now it's uh, 150. And, uh, so, uh, I have to follow up to see if there's any cap, I don't believe, on an individual room, uh, based on that, but I'm pretty sure there, there isn't. Um, and is there any, in the future, are we increasing the number of people who can join a meeting from 150 to say 200, 250? Yep, absolutely. That's the plan. And that's part of the, uh, so the, the events question I answered a minute ago. It's sort of, uh, we're going to, uh, fully roll out sequin. We're going to increase the capacity of meetings and then, uh, essentially we'll, we'll, we'll be there. Perfect. And then can someone use the breakout sessions if they're using the browser for meetings? Yes. Okay. That's a unique thing, sort of, in the market. Um, how will restricted internal meetings work for SIP? They'll work. No. Perfect. Uh, essentially, it, yeah. yeah, no, we'll have to give you more granular uh, details on the, on the documentation for that. So. Perfect. Um, is there a low bandwidth mode for meetings? Absolutely, yeah. All of our meetings actually go through a, uh, we, we have a, a bandwidth manager, right? Uh, and so on the desktop, we sort of take care of that automatically. We will reduce your uh, your resolution and uh, a video and so forth and adjust to maintain audio quality and preserve that. Um, now, when it comes to mobile, we actually have an explicit low bandwidth mode uh, mm -hmm. that you actually can choose in the UI, and that's because you're on the on on the on the road and uh, LTE and uh, you know various wireless connectivity could could be problematic, and so we give you low bandwidth mode, and then also we even give you a driving mode, which is essentially audio only, and uh, really just reduces the uh, the bandwidth you use down to audio. Right? Perfect. And, uh, um, is there a way for meetings to automatically end after an elapsed time? Uh, today, uh, we have the only logic we have in place is if only one person is sitting in a meeting and that's it. We'll have eventually ended, I believe, after 30 minutes. Uh, no current way to kill a meeting uh, at the moment. Perfect. And does Blue and have an ending just, for meetings? Sorry. Sorry, Maggie. Sorry, we're going to have to probably wrap this up. Uh, I think we're about eight minutes over, and uh, and uh, we have some some uh, some meetings to attend after this. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So those will be the last question. Does Google have an end security in the meetings platform? Sorry. Does Blue Jeans have end-to-end -end encryption security no. for the meetings platform? No. Pure end-to-end -end encryption requires third-party key managers and key exchanges. Uh, host client generates keys, sends them to attendees, all of that. Uh, that's, that's what that requires to have true end-to-end -end encryption. There's very few players that actually do pure end-to-end -end encryption today. Uh, we are working towards end-to-end uh, -end encryption like I'm sure everybody else is. Perfect. And then again, right. everyone, if we didn't answer your questions, we will follow up and we will send you a recording. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.